In an idyllic hilltop setting in southern France, ITER, one of the most ambitious scientific projects ever conceived, has embarked to produce the power of the universe. While mighty bulldozers, concrete pumps, and cranes dominate the scene on the ITER worksite, the machine's components are taking shape all around the world. We start our journey in China, at the Institute of Plasma Physics in Hefei. It's here where the cables for the machine's powerful superconducting coils, its feeders, and correction coils are being manufactured. On the 25th of April this year, a first batch of dummy conductors was shipped from China to the ITER worksite for testing purposes. In Zhan, at the premises of the Zhan XD Transformer Group, the 14 mighty transformers for ITER's poloidal field coil power converters will be manufactured, each of them capable of carrying currents of up to 80 megavolt ampere. Routine testing of the first prototype is in progress. Europe provides the steel and concrete infrastructure for the ITER facility. And, among many other components, 10 of the machine's 18 toroidal field coils. In La Spezia in northern Italy, the consortium ASG has built a special facility, where preparations are underway for the heat treatment and the winding of the precious superconductors, and finally their insertion into protective radial plates. From Italy, we jump to Hazir in western India, where the ITA cryostat is taking shape at the Larsen and Tubro workshop. The 3,800 ton steel structure will be the world's largest high vacuum pressure chamber ever built, measuring 29 meters in diameter and the same in height. Too big to be transported in its entire size, it will be dispatched in 54 modules to the ITA worksite. Here, a special workshop is under construction for the pre assembly of these modules. A few hundred kilometers further south, at the Avasarala workshop in Bangalore, the manufacturing of ITER's 9,000 in-wall shielding blocks has commenced. Made of berated and ferromagnetic steel and weighing between 160 and 820 kilograms, these shielding blocks will protect the ITER cryostat components from the neutron radiation. And on to Japan, to its southernmost island of Kyushu. It's here, at the Wakamatsu Ita factory of Nippon Steel Engineering, where the 900-meter-long industrial jacketing line is installed, producing the Japanese share of Ita's toroidal and central solenoid superconductors made out of niobium-310. Further north, at the Mitsubishi Futami plant near Kobe, the equipment for the winding of Ita's extra-large toroidal field coils is in place, and dummy winding trials are currently being performed attracting project management representatives from near and far. From Japan, we continue our round-the-world trip and travel to Korea. But before we do so, we will visit the premises of the company Kind in rural Germany. It was in the early hours of the 29th of October 2012 when the last of 633 stainless steel forgings for the ITER vacuum vessel were lifted onto trucks. Their destination Hyundai Heavy Industries in Ulsan, South Korea. It is also here where the first sectors of ITER's vacuum vessel and port structures are being welded and milled. The manufacturing of the stainless steel vessel is divided between Europe, which will supply seven sectors, and Korea, which will supply two. In the world of tokamaks, ITA will be a giant. However, the operation of this giant couldn't be successful without such tiny elements as diamond detectors. These small components, measuring only 4 by 4 millimeters, are an important diagnostic tool to detect the neutrons inside the machine. The precious and delicate detectors are manufactured at the Trinity facility of the Troitsk Institute for Innovation and Fusion Research near Moscow. Another part of the Russian commitment to ITER is the special test facility, which has been assembled at the Efremov Institute in St. Petersburg. In this facility, ITER's vulnerable plasma facing components will be exposed to the same extreme heat loads they will face inside the ITER machine. 
This test program is also a vivid example of ITER's international spirit, as it involves scientists from both Russia and Japan. 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Edge localized two, modes, or ELMs one. for short, are highly energetic plasma instabilities, just like solar flares, and so not really welcome in a fusion machine. As part of ITER's ELM mitigation approach, means of firing frozen deuterium pellets into the plasma are currently being tested at the D3D facility in San Diego. Meanwhile, on the premises of the Joseph Oat Corporation based in Camden, New Jersey, fabrication activities for ITER's drain tanks have begun. The four large stainless steel tanks are part of ITER's water cooling system and hold up to 285,000 liters of water each. The design requires that each tank has two hemispherical heads, comprised of a curved top cap and a base fabricated from six steel segments welded together. The drain tanks will be among the first major hardware items shipped to the ITER site in France. The first components are due to arrive from the different corners of the world by the middle of 2014. This will be the starter pistol for the ITER assembly, one of the most complex exercises ever performed 